hi and welcome to the Roosevelt University Spotlight on the Honors Program webinar. We're so happy that you're here. In just a few moments, you will get to meet some of the people of the Honors Program, and I thought I would introduce them before we get started. So we'll be hearing from Professor Vincent Franconi, who is a professor in the Department of English and also runs the University Writing Center. You will hear from me. My name is Marjorie Jollis. I'm the executive director of the Honors Program at Roosevelt, and I've been a professor here for 15 years. And we have three students joining us tonight on our panel, and they are Salma Marty, a junior who's majoring in English and psychology, Denise Marodio Gomez, a sophomore, who's majoring in human resource management, and Antea Zachary, a senior, who's majoring in social justice studies and political science. So let me tell you a little bit about what the Roosevelt University Honors Program is. We are first and foremost an academic program. And what that means is that your honors experience occurs in your honors classes on campus, chatting with your professors as part of your academic experience. You'll be a member of a community that's really intellectually engaged. Students who love school, love to talk about ideas, have a great time debating and exploring questions, and feeling a sense of belonging that you're with students who have similar interests and traits. And in the honors program, we provide opportunities for students to grow personally and professionally. So in addition to all that academic benefit and challenge, we also invite students to really stretch themselves as people and as future professionals. So if you're wondering if you should join the honors program, I'll tell you a little bit about why you should. First, students get to do original projects. So in non-honors courses, students might get to take some tests and do all kinds of projects. And in the honors program, we really push the, the project end. So we want students to come up with their own fascinating questions, and then we give them the tools to go and explore and answer them. In the honors program, our classes are really small. So you get to know your professors and they get to know you. Honor students can work as assistants to Roosevelt professors on their research. So this is a really exciting role that we offer that a student can be paired with a professor and help them on their research project. Students can also work for the honors program itself. And the three students who are here with us tonight are all employees. They're all members of the honors program staff. In the honors program, we learn in and out of the classroom. So you have these small engaging seminars and you also get to go out into the city, it's our campus, and explore and apply your learning in experiential hands-on ways. And then we also are really proud of the fact that in the honors program, the curriculum really is up to you. Students will choose honors courses based on their major or the electives they need, or sometimes an honors course will satisfy a general education requirement. But our goal in the honors program is that the courses fit seamlessly into your college experience. So you're not adding on additional courses. We fit the honors program into your Roosevelt, your, your sort of your four year, or if you're transferring your two year plans. And there's more. So in addition, honor students get one-on-one -on -one advising every semester where we really wanna hear about what your personal and professional goals are and help you strategize to meet them. We offer professional development opportunities. I'm thinking right now of something that's happening in just two days. The honors program is taking 11 honors students to a simulation of model Illinois government where students get to simulate the Illinois legislature. So we're always thinking about ways to support our students growing as professionals. Students in the honors program also work one-on-one -on -one with Roosevelt professors. This happens in your classes, 
but it really happens in your honors thesis, which occupies your final year at honors. That's a creative research project that the student designs and works one-on-one -on -one with a professor to complete. Your friends in the honors program, the community, that lifts you up and keeps you going. And we have writing groups. We just had a social where we sat around and did crafts for two hours. It was so fun. So we're really proud of the vibrant community that our students build here in the honors program. And then finally, when students complete the honors program at graduation, you get a stamp on your Roosevelt transcript that says, are you honors program? And so it's clear from anyone reading your transcript that you have done this additional challenging academic, this supplemental academic program. So if that sounds great, we want you to join. Some of you have already joined or applied, and that's wonderful. Welcome. I can't wait to meet you in the fall. If you haven't joined yet, it's easy to do so. In the comments, you'll see a link to the Roosevelt University Honors Program blog. And when you go there, you'll see a little box that says apply. That's all you need to do. We look at your application holistically. We're really interested in you as a whole person. So it's not just about what are your test scores. We really want to learn about you and what fascinates you to decide if we're the program for you and if you want to be a member of our community. And so again, if you go into the chat, you'll see the link to apply. So thanks for walking through that intro to the honors program with me. And I'm going to now step back from the slideshow so you can meet our panel, Denise, Antea, Salma, and Professor Franconi. Hi, everyone. Hello. So, hello. So I'm going to start us off with uh, an easy first question. And I thought I would go to Antea first and ask, why did you join the Roosevelt Honors Program? That's a great question, Marjorie, especially I think for me as a transfer student. Um, initially for my freshman and sophomore years, I attended a college in Arizona. And I really realized that I was not being fulfilled as a student with the academic rigor and adventure I wanted in my education. And I really wanted to pursue a school that would that would fulfill that desire in me. Um, and that's that's really how I could best define it. Follow up question. Is it what you expected? It's more than I expected. How so? Tell us. Because I think, too, while I thought I had an idea of what I wanted, I knew it was more than I was getting. Um, but when I first was um, looking at Roosevelt and being Looking at Roosevelt, actually, I had not first been presented with <laughs> honors. And it suddenly appeared like after I got in that the honors program approached me. And I was like, well, <laughs> now that's I was looking for academic and rigor, but I thought that would just come in applying to Roosevelt, not also in this additional community I could join. And so I think that's really what was unexpected. Oh, I love that. That's great. Salma, what about you? Why did you join honors? So um, when I first like was thinking about Roosevelt University, I didn't really know about an honors program and I didn't really know how that like worked in colleges. Um, I thought that it would be like high school honors program or honors, which I did not like at all because it was I felt it was way more like based towards like test scores and like stuff like that. Um, so I had gotten a call from um, someone who had been working in the, the honors program at that point. And I think I talked to her for like 20 minutes just about like my concerns about like it being too hard or like not being able to keep up and stuff like that. And she just like assured me that that would not be the case. It would be the opposite if anything, because you would actually be getting more help um, than you would in just like regular classes. Um, so I think just from her, I was able to like solidify like wanting to like do that. Um, but yeah, and then here I am. Yay, I'm so glad you brought that up because that is something that is important to us to convey to students who are thinking of coming to Roosevelt and are thinking of joining the honors program. For a lot of students in high school, your only experience with honors is that high school model 
like AP or honors tracks where it's really about doing extra work, more work. Um, those can be somewhat competitive environments. And so we're always really quick to explain to people it's not like that <laughs> at the college level and at Roosevelt especially. It's much more about a community that is super supportive where we're really just excited about your own curiosity and we want you to feel empowered to go and explore and fulfill, you know, sort of answer your questions. And so I'm so glad that, that you heard that and were able to make that choice. Denise, tell us about how, what's honors been like for you um, is it what you thought it would be? Is it different? Um, honors has been really good to me. Uh, when I first joined, I had this, I attended a webinar where they explained to me that it was in like high school honors, right? But despite that, I had like um, a little doubt. I was like, mm, maybe, you know, but it took my first semester, my first honors class to realize that it was very much different from honors in high school. Um, it was more about, you know, being creative, exploring new ways of learning, um, building um, a strong foundation for um, your college experience. And yeah. It's all those things. I love every word you just said in your description. Professor Franconi, let me ask you this. How would you define or describe the typical Roosevelt Honors student? Um, in my experience, they're all um, different from each other. So it's it's hard to like be as reductive as to say, this is a typical Roosevelt honor mm -hmm. student. Um, look at the three of them on the panel today. Are they, they are very different in their own ways and unique individuals. Um, but while they're not necessarily different from non-honor students, um, what they do have in common because of the program kind of fosters this is um, a willingness or an excitement to join a community and be a part of, of something like that. Um, in addition to that, a kind of a drive to do something a little bit out of the ordinary as far as their college experience in the classroom. Everyone's kind of mentioned creative projects, and I think honors does kind of emphasize that there are some projects that the classes offer that are going to set it uh, apart from the average class. And it usually has something to do with a creative or an innovative learning model. And that's exciting to the honor student. It's exciting to those of us who get to teach those classes as well. So curiosity is a big part of it. Um, and I think just a desire to have a unique college experience. Yeah, for sure. And I see the students nodding. So that sounded like a spot on, spot on uh, description. Since you teach often in the <laughs> honors program, and we're so grateful that you do, could you tell us about the classroom environment of an honors course? Um. I, when I do it, I tend to favor a lot of discussion based for some courses, which isn't something I'm as comfortable with, frankly, in a non-honors environment. So I do like to have the students kind of feel like they can contribute equally. Um, I want that in all my classes, but in honors, that's especially important to me. So I really do like that. And um, that creativity that we talked about is definitely big. I think my favorite project of all time is... Um, which maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, it is in honors classes. It, it does tend to allow the students to have a little bit more of like a field research elements and contribution. That's right. uh, I think a little bit more fun and innovative. So it, 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 to me, it really is about involving the students as much as possible in the actual kind of co-creation of the class, if that makes sense. It does. And it's thrilling. I love that. So let me ask the students, and I guess I'll start with Antea. Is there what's been your favorite honors thing? So that could be an assignment you've done, an experience you've had, a place you've gone, a friend you've made. What would you say is at the top of your list of favorite honors things? I think on the top of my list would actually be what really hooked me on honors. And that's when I first was talking to the director, Sarah Maria Rutter, and she introduced me to the honors exchange and was trying to kind of lure me into honors with that. And I was like, oh, you're really luring me, Sarah Maria, because <laughs> it was the honors exchange where we focused on um, Jane Adams, Jane Byrne, the Janes of Chicago, essentially. Um, and it was probably the most beautiful learning experience I ever had. We got to sit with historian Dr. Lynn Weiner at Hull House, which is what Jane Adams created and founded. And oh. um, I remember just sitting with her and she at one point prompted us with this question and said, what, what do you think these walls have heard? And it was the first time I had really like contextualized history as in, in the space around me. And that seems so 
Um, why didn't you do that sooner? But it was so revolutionary in that moment, um, thinking about history and space and what's been created in time. And I think that would definitely be my favorite memory because it was also very collaborative. We did it with UIC. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was an incredible experience. And I really love how you've emphasized how immersed you were, right? So in the honors program, we'd like to take you to places. We just did a tour of the auditorium theater. We're about to do a tour of Chicago neighborhoods through the Chicago Architecture Center. So we're really all about classroom learning. And we like to take learning out of the classroom and give students that experience of you can have an intellectually thrilling experience in a non-classroom way. So it could be going to Jane Addams Hull House Museum. It could be sitting together and watching a movie and talking about it, right? We're all about making learning fun and experiential. Salma, how about you? A favorite honors thing, an assignment, a class, an experience, a person? Mm -hmm. So this was actually um, in Franconi's class last year um, in English 102. And this was, this was with Denise too. Um, we did a project where we were basically tasked of making like a social, um, like social rights, like you know, kind of project. So um, we decided to do one based on like recycling and stuff like that. And we had to make like everything. Like we made the website, like an Instagram for it. Like we made posts for it and everything like that. And when he when he was first like presenting like the project, I was like way over in my head. Like I was so worried about how much we would have to do and how like real and fake everything would have to be. But it ended up being like one of like my favorite projects that I've ever done. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that was soil cycle. That's what we called our organization. Um, but yeah, it was. I got a lot closer to Denise during that and our other partners, and we made something that I was really, really proud of in the end. So I really like that. Oh, that's so cool! All right, Denise. Same question for you. Um, and you don't have to say it was the same project that Salma <laughs> described. But what's yeah. been your favorite honors thing activity? experience uh, my favorite honors like I have this memory of um, my first honors class with Sarah Maria we were um, reading mouse and I remember it was really tough for me to participate right and the first time I participated in her class after class she sent me an email like acknowledging that right and to me it was like a little bit weird because I was I didn't like it, it felt like she saw me you know and then after that it was just we built upon that relationship and now you know, she's my advisor and we talk about a lot of things. That's right. We, I, that's beautiful. We see you in the honors program. I think that's really true. I'm glad that was your experience with our small classes and our small community. It's not hard to see you as individuals, to spend time with each of you, to share our whole selves, you know, with each other and to look here about your families and to learn about what you're fascinated by and to be involved in your graduate school plans. I'm looking at you, Antea. I know you've had some great news recently about getting admitted to doctoral programs. So we're really all about you as full three-dimensional people. So I love that you felt seen. That's about the best compliment you could give us. All right, so let me ask you, the three of you work for the honors program in different ways. Could you tell us a little bit about what sort of work you do? What, what has that, what perspective has that given you on the honors program? Is there something that you've learned about honors through being a staff member that you want to tell us about? And maybe I'll go, I'll go back to you, Denise, for that. Um, so we work, I, we all work as um, honors program assistants, and we run like the social media, our Twitter, our, fa our Facebook, our Instagram. Um, we do spotlights on students. We also write a newsletter every semester mm -hmm. uh, with um, a lot of good information in there. And then we just do flyers and more of the little stuff, right? But um, working with them, you have to reach out to students, right, in the honors program. And getting to know them and seeing how unique each one of them are um, is really fun for me. And I know for my coworkers too. Um, so like writing stories and um, small profiles on them is one of my favorite things about working. That's really great. That's really great. And I'm gonna flip it for just a moment. Professor Franconi, you've worked with each of these three students. If you wanna, I'm curious if you could describe 
some of the work you've done with any or all of the three students here? Sure. Um, well, Antea was, uh, I've never had in classroom, but Antea was, uh, did a lot of wonderful research for me um, last year uh, as a research assistant, which was uh, something that Sarah Maria reached out and said, we have somebody who's uh, willing to do that. And do you have any projects? And I'm like, well, I want to revamp uh, a lot of things over the next more than a year, but year, hopefully, uh, involving not only my tutoring class, English 222, but also the work I do in the writing center. And then more specifically, or more broadly, I should say, um, just writing composition theory and pedagogy in general. So I kind of threw on Taya, I think a, few, a lot of curveballs every week and said, like, she would find amazing research for me. And then I would say, this is really great. And it gives me a new idea. And then we would sort of start from scratch a lot. But that was great because like, that's what I wanted. I wanted like a very broad collection of sources and, 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 and um, resources. And she was kind of coming back with like really great ideas. So it felt like, um, you know, I would give her a small prompt and she would, she would take it to a really wonderful place. So Antea, that's how I know her. Uh, Salma and Denise, I've known for a while too. Denise, I've had in three classes, I want to say now. Wow. She started in English 101 before she was in honors. Uh, and then she was in my honors 102 and my 222. And Salma also was not only in my honors classes, but I think she took a non-honors class with me as well. So, and most recently, those two were in my tutoring pedagogy class. So that's where they got to apply um, some of the course materials to the actual experiential um, uh, practice of tutoring which was fantastic. And I would have hired either of them to be in the learning commons, but apparently Sarah Maria snatched them up to work on art before I got a chance to make that offer. But it still stands if you ever decide, not that you should. We won't tell her. Okay. Okay. That's really cool. So Professor Franconi is describing a class that we're really proud to call ours in the honors program. It's the writing tutoring course where students learn how to tutor other you know, peers. Um, you learn all about teaching, writing, uh, theories of how writers write, what writers need, um, what does it mean to help a writer. Um, we are really proud in the honors program that the students who are hired to be tutors, some of them are our honors students and they came through this course that Professor Franconi teaches. So that's one example, one of many that we've heard already tonight about the kind of activities that go on in an honors course. They're active, dynamic environments, those classrooms. They're not lecture-based. It's really about hands-on learning and being pretty active. As Professor Franconi said, you know, co-creator of your own, your own learning together. Salma, let me ask you something. Um, so it matters to us in the honors program that honor students are not isolated from the rest of the university. So for those watching, I'll explain that honors courses, they make up about 20% of the classes that you'll take at Roosevelt University. So you're not shut off from the rest of the university. In fact, you're really immersed in the university. And so one question, and I'd love to hear Salma's answer is, what are, how has your honors experience helped you be a strong student in your major? Is there something you've learned in honors about learning and curiosity and applying yourself that you bring to your life at Roosevelt outside of honors? Yeah, so I think maybe the biggest thing that I've like earned from being in um, honors classes is I'm not very good at like speaking to classes, especially big classes. So when like all of our on honors classes are basically like discussion based and much smaller classes, it made it way easier for me to like start getting comfortable with like sharing my mind, speaking my mind and stuff like that. And also just like helped me learn like a more like, I guess, productive way of doing it. Um, I would say like from Sarah Maria's first class, we learned about like the importance of asking questions and like asking proper questions to get like proper answers and like things like that. And also just like how to how to like, I guess, analyze things in certain ways. And um, yeah, so that's I think Denise mentioned this earlier about how the honors program isn't necessarily harder. It just teaches you to learn in a better, maybe more productive way. So I think that shows a lot in other classes I'm taking right now. Like, for example, the um, class I took with um, Vincent Franconi that wasn't honors, but still had that kind of feel just because of like the discussion and also just because he's an honors teacher as well. So, Right, right. 
Oh, I'm so happy to hear that, Salma. That's a great description. And we really care about students' experience at all of Roosevelt, not just in the honors program. And so to hear that being in honors class has taught you skills that you can then rely on in all kinds of environments, honors or not, that really makes me feel like the program is doing what we set out to do, which is for you to be really, really active in your entire Roosevelt experience. So speaking of your Roosevelt experience, each of the three of you are at different stages. Mm -hmm. So Antea, for example, you're in your final semester, which breaks my heart, of course, but I'm so happy for you. So you're writing an honors thesis, whereas Salma and Denise are, you, you'll get there, but you're not there yet. And so I thought I would ask, Antea, what's it like to be in your final semester writing an honors thesis? What, what's it like at this level, your final semester in honors? Yeah, I guess it's kind of funny because, and I was thinking about this today, I was really thinking about how I haven't spent much time at Roosevelt and much time specifically in the honors program, but it almost feels like I've been a part of this community forever and I was supposed to be a part of this community forever. Um, my thesis process has really been probably one of the most incredible writing experiences ever in school, which I think is because the honors program, um, specifically in the honors 398 class, we were allowed to formulate questions really specific to our interests um, as far out as that question may go. Um, and I get to have this incredible process where every day I'm actually engaging in my thesis writing, whether it's talking to the directors of the honors program about my thesis every day I walk into the office or seeing my mentor once a week. But it's almost like my thesis is like a work in progress and it's like paralleling my experience and paralleling my journey towards the end of this program. Well, it's not every thesis writer who says in mid-February, I'm having an amazing time writing my honors thesis. Some do. And I'm so thrilled to hear it. It's really, um, so for those watching, the honors thesis is a capstone. That means it's a time for students to take stock, to produce an original piece of work, as Antea said, through the guidance of a faculty mentor. And it's something you can own in a deeper way than an assignment that let's say a professor gives you. Those are great too. But a thesis is really in a, in a league of its own. It's a really special experience. So I'm thrilled, thrilled to hear it. Let me ask, uh, Salma and Denise, the same question, which is, can you think of a time in your honors experience where you took a risk? Um, that could be an academic risk, a personal risk, a professional risk. What was that like for you? Maybe Denise, let's hear from you. Um, I think my biggest risk was working for the honors program because it was my first like real job, I guess. And it was scary because um, Sarah Maria and Marjorie really like trusted me to do these things. Of course. And I kind of like went for it, right? And they were nothing but supportive and encouraged me to like keep going, me and my other coworkers. So that was like a big risk that I don't regret taking because it's helped me get here. Oh, I'm so glad. Salma, how about you? Well, there's so many, like I, I'm having trouble figuring out one. But I'd say maybe um, first semester when I was taking first year success with Sarah Maria, um, we did a project called a dossier. And it was basically just like a presentation of like um, something in your life, I guess. Um, and Sarah Maria had asked me to present mine at the senior thesis for that um, like semester. And I at first I really didn't want to because I hate presenting, especially like over Zoom and like things like that. Um, but she's just like kept telling me how like I really should and like you know like you can put this on your resume like things like that and I eventually just like figured might as well you know and then from there I like ended up like every risk was bigger like for example like working here I've worked in the honors program three different times like different jobs and every one I like I kind of had to be convinced to do it it's just because I like didn't trust myself to do well enough at first like Denise said like I didn't trust myself with like a a real job I mean what I mean by that is like a like you know a more like intellectually you know kind of job but I don't regret a single one of those so yeah. 
Right. And in fact, I heard you say taking this risk led me to take this next risk and the one after that and the one after that. Right. So that's what we want. We we know that some students come to college thinking honors. I mean, it's big. It's a big enough deal that I'm coming to college. I'm not going to add something harder on top. And that is, again, where we would remind you it's not harder. You're, in fact, choosing a community to get sort of wrapped around with support and encouragement. And so if this describes you, if you feel like, oh, there are these risks I want to take, but I'm scared to, in the honors program, we want you to take them. You can't fail. You can't fail. We're here to just cheer you on and make you feel that you can do it. And I'm hearing from everyone here in different ways that you have done things maybe you weren't sure you could do, but you're watching yourself do them. And that gives us the greatest thrill of all. That when you see your own, when you see in yourself that you have grown significantly personally, that's that's our favorite thing in the world. So I have a question for everybody on the panel. It's the same question, and I'll start with Professor Franconi. If you were chatting with a student who was considering coming to Roosevelt University and considering joining the honors program, what would you say to them? Uh, just join uh, <laughs> that, you know, there's really no downside to this as you're, as you're, you're pointing out uh, tonight, all of you are pointing out, it's not honors as the, in the sense of the AP classes you may have taken in high school and had mixed feelings about. Um, it's a community you're joining. And that's, I, I think the experience of college can be, it can be a lot of things depending on, you know, what you put into it and what you're seeking. But if you're seeking community, I think it's definitely, you're going to find it in honors. If you're thinking uh, intellectual engagement that's a little bit different than sort of the average. I think you're absolutely going to find that in honors. And these are the things that I uh, didn't realize I was looking for when I was a student, but I would have definitely benefited from, frankly, because I think it's always easier if you have community and you have um, you know resources that I think honors provides. So there's no real downside to it. Um, it's a lot more fun too. Like y'all have fun. You've invited me. You were nice enough to invite me to a few events growing through it. We painted pots and you know had bonsai plants. I think it was uh, or little plants. Um, like you know, that's wonderful. That's fun activities. And uh, you know, who would say no to fun and community? Amazing response, Antea. How about you? What would you say to a student who was like, mm, maybe I don't know? I would say be committed to the experience and be committed to the journey. I think there are a lot of times in life we can say yes to things without really thinking like, am I truthfully saying yes or am I just saying yes? And I'm like floating around and letting things happen. But I would say really be committed because there's nothing like a community of students who are all committed. Like my classroom space, even this philosophy of life class I take with Denise, students walk in there every day ready to talk about the ideas that are in the text we're reading. And it's only because students are committed that we can have conversations that just flow and are so like you're sad to leave them when the class ends. So I would say be committed. Brilliant. Love it. Denise, how about you? Same question. Mm, I would really encourage them to join. Uh, because especially if you're coming in as a freshman, it can be very scary to start this new journey, right? And the honors program will be there beside you every step of it. And you will be able to talk to anybody in the program and they will like help you figure it out. And you also um, get a lot of good friends out of the program. Um, me and Salma have been friends since our freshman year, my freshman year, and I met Antea a little bit later on but it feels like I have known her like longer because of how much we interact with each other. So you definitely get a lot of out of the program. Beautiful. Okay, Salma, what's your response to that question? Well, I think all three of them kind of hit every nail, but um, I like to like bring up the community sense a lot, um, especially since like the honors program is only just like a certain like percent of the population you are going to see like the same students in every class and i really really enjoyed that because i love the people like in our grade um and just like again from like coming in as a freshman like i was terrified because it was like an actual university and i was scared of making friends and like things like that 
luckily I found a niece, so I'll be okay. But um, yeah, and also not just a community with like um, friends and classmates, but also with teachers and faculty, like Franconia, I've had him in three or four classes. Sarah Maria, I see her like every single day. Um, and I feel like that they will be, I don't know, very like helpful in the rest of my academic career too. I mean, there you, there you heard it, folks. I mean, that's like the greatest argument for joining honors I think I've ever heard. There's no downside. Commit to the experience. Do it and you'll find the community and the belonging that you're looking for that will make college easier, not harder, but easier, right? So I've just sort of summarized what I've heard from the four of you. Fantastic. You all should join our marketing team and <laughs> represent the honors program so beautifully as you do. So we thought we would, if there are any questions from anyone watching, um, open the floor to hear them and answer them. Let's see. What is the workload like? What to expect, tests or quizzes? That's a question from Kyle. Thank you, Kyle, for that question. What is the workload like? Well, we've said it's not more work. Honors professors don't design classes thinking, okay, these are honor students, I need to make them work harder. What professors often do is design classes thinking, oh, these students want something experiential, they want something active, they want something unique, they wanna be able to design maybe what they learn. So we encourage the professors to not give tests or quizzes. That's really not the teaching philosophy that's best aligned with an honors experience. So instead of tests and quizzes, students in honors classes will create presentations or do a group project that's a website, you know, something like that. So we are we we care a lot about students learning and there are many ways for students to demonstrate their learning beyond the test and quiz model. So if you're the kind of student who's like tests and quizzes aren't for me, I want to engage my learning differently, honors would be a really good home for you. Students and Professor Franconi, is there anything you want to add to that? Salma, go ahead. Yeah, I was trying to think like why we, while you were speaking, if I've ever even taken a quiz or test in one of my honors classes. And I don't like according to my memory, I don't think I have. I think mostly where the workload is coming from is like preparing for discussions, like reading and just making sure that you can contribute to discussions and like that. Um, and I think that's so much more helpful because it's ensuring that because like Homework, like you can do it, but sometimes it'll just go like right out of your head and you're not really getting anything from that. But if you're preparing to like speak and to preparing to like discuss, then you definitely have to like understand, you know, the material in a way where you can, you know, but yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. That's a great distinction. Yeah, go ahead. As I'm preparing more classes and doing this more and more, I'm working more with honors. I'm thinking more and more about this because I mean, I still do, depending on the class, make the students do something traditional in the sense of like, we're going to write a paper at some point. But even like my 102 class, which is the honors version of it, differs from the regular honors version in the sense that I try to lean more heavily on those kinds of projects and group work and discussion as opposed to, well, now I'm going to tell you about this. And that's just because like I do, I, I don't necessarily feel the need to quiz the students. I expect, you know, we'll figure out if they did the reading or not. And we'll talk if they're having trouble with that. But like, ultimately, it's about like, what do you have to offer the conversation more than just like regurgitating ideas that you're supposed to do? So I'm far more interested in that in papers. I, I, you know, when I do make people do more traditional work like that, I prefer them to be like, find a project that interests you that you're going to write about, you know? Um, and in the tutoring class, there's very few, I mean, I was kind of thinking we don't do enough papers in that class now that I was thinking about it, Denise and Salma, um, because it's so much more like the, the, the work really is majority of that class is, actually going and helping me tutor 101 students and interacting with them as peers, which is a complete experiential credit as opposed to you're gonna do 50 papers and take a bunch of tests. Mm -hmm. So we lean more heavily on things like that because we think they're a little bit more in line with what honors expects and tries to foster. Great, thank you for that. Um, here's an easy question from Shin to answer. How many honors courses per semester? One, 
um, we call this continuous enrollment. So the expectation in the honors program is that you're in it. So every semester you're taking one honors course. Now, there's nothing stopping you from taking two or taking one honors course and also doing what we call the honors exchange, which is our uh, co-curriculum where we're out in the city learning about Chicago architecture or something like that. So there's definitely no rule against taking more than one, but the expectation is that students take one honors course a semester. And Rebecca is asking, how do you enjoy the school since it is smaller? Someone, let's maybe hear from one of you. Denise? Yeah. Um, I think it's so, I love it because like I said previously, the honors program is also, the classes are a lot, like smaller than your normal classrooms, which makes it so much personal, you know? And you finish the semester knowing everybody in that classroom and talking to at least, uh, to all of them at least once. And that just like continues, continue, continue. So you see them again, like in the hallways. So you start building those relationships and they last all year. They do. That's right. Salma, go ahead. Um, it was something you said earlier that kind of stuck with me. I think it was something along the lines of like um, the city is our campus or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, Roosevelt University is like right in the middle of downtown so um there's a lot to do like out there and um i'd say like ex experiential classes or like um courses like the honors exchange for that where like we had an assignment where we had to go to like different um different city or neighborhoods and like learn about them and things like that and for the project i was talking about earlier with franconi we were tasked with like researching a different um like organization and learning about them too. So I just really like the way that like um, our classes like involve Chicago as like kind of like a ground ground space too. Salma, that's such a great comment because it picks up on a question that Denise wrote in, which is, is the honors program active with community outreach programs? And we absolutely are. So sometimes there's community outreach that's going on at Roosevelt University and Honors makes the connection. So we have social justice institutes at Honors that are working or at Roosevelt that are working on all kinds of things. And we will often recommend our students. We will send an email saying, you got to sign up for this fellowship, right? I'm looking all, all of these, all, the three of you have done really interesting things. So yes, community outreach is a big part of the entire Roosevelt University experience. In fact, I would go out on a limb and say, I don't think a student can spend their entire college experience at Roosevelt and not have a community outreach experience of some kind. There's one more question I wanna ask, and this is from Joseph who asks, are athletes typically involved? Is there work around with practicing games? Also, thank you. Thank you for coming to the Great Forum. Yes. So we have many students who are both in the athletics program and in the honors program. Lots of crossover. And we're very comfortable with students who have travel schedules and practices and games. In fact, I would say that's true of all professors at Roosevelt. We're used to getting information about a student who says, I'm on the softball team, this is my schedule. And those students get so much support, athlete, athletic students. So we work with your coaches or your academic support team to make sure that you're getting your work done. So it's not like an either or. I would say I can think of many, many students who are both in the honors program and in an athletics program. Wish Roosevelt would move to Crystal Lake. I see that. Come to Roosevelt in the loop. It's a thrilling place to be, as Salma said. Chicago really is our campus. If you come to Roosevelt University, you will learn about this city in fascinating ways. Not the tourist story, but the real, true Chicago experience that is really different depending on where in Chicago you are. And we don't shy away from the political complexity and histories of our city. In fact, we, we, we really lean into what makes this city so thrilling and so complicated. Um, so thank you all so much for joining us for this webinar. You can reach out to me anytime at the Roosevelt University Honors Program. Our email address is honors at roosevelt.edu.
really, really simple. And if you go into the chat, you'll see at the top the blog where you'll learn about us, you'll read a little bit about the honors program, and you can apply to join us. I want to thank our panelists, Denise Morodio Gomez, Antea Zachary, Salma Marty, and Professor Vincent Franconi for taking this time to share with us your honors experience. You are all such shining examples of everything that's great about the Roosevelt Honors Program and about Roosevelt University as well. So thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.